Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds Because without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me Hi everyone, if you're new here, my name's Katie and today we're going to be looking through my Christian bookshelves and non-Christian bookshelves. Okay, so seeing as this is a faith account, we will start with my Christian books and then we'll move on to everything else that I've got. So to start off with, I have my Francine Rivers collection. I also have Redeeming Love, but my mum is actually borrowing that at the moment. So I'm going to do a whole separate video on Francine Rivers. If you'd like more information about these books, but currently I have been reading the Mark of the Lion series. I've read book one and book two and I still have to read book three, um, but highly recommend this. It is amazing. Then I've got Sons of Encouragement and A Lineage of Grace. I've also got The Master piece which has just got such a beautiful cover and the scarlet thread and then I've got three of C.S. Lewis's books I've got The Problem of Pain, The Screw Tape Letters and Mere Christianity I've got a biography about D.L. Moody and then I have The Great Controversy by A.G. White I've got Prophecy 2020 by Chuck Missler Fervent by Priscilla Shira Tom writes Paul a biography love this book it's all about Paul and, and talks all the way through his life I've got a book here which is just a Bible trivia book great to pull out at Christmas time or any kind of church fellowship night everybody loves a bit of Bible trivia then I've got Change Your Word, Change Your Life by Joyce Meyer. I actually find this book really helpful because words are something that can give life to people. Words are really something that we should be so careful with. And in this book, she has a lot of different scriptures that back up why we should be careful about what we say. Then I have the She Reads Truth book. I was actually sent this by a girl on my Instagram, which was so kind of her. Then I have If Only by Jenny Pollock, Let It Go by Karen Amon, Out of the Comfort Zone by... George Verwer and then a teeny tiny little book in here which is The Power of a Praying Parent. Love this book. If you are struggling with prayers for your to use over your children this gives you so many good ones. I've got a little book which is Words of Hope for Women. I have Satan You Can't Have My Children. Shape in History by Derek Prince. And then I have Living by the Book which is a really good one for helping you with Bible study. I've got The Bible That Jesus Read by Philip Yancey, No Greater Love by A.W. Tozer, The Two Israels of God, Praying Like Monks, Living Like Fools. This one is a Joyce Meyer one called Living Beyond Your Feelings. And then I have the Bible book. It talks you through each of the books of the Bible and gives you a little bit of context about them. Really good when you're doing some Bible study and you need a bit more information. And then the next shelf is full of Bibles. I also have a Bible down here and a Bible down here. This one I've showed before. It's just a beautiful book on the Psalms. It has all the Psalms with beautiful imagery. This one is my most used Bible. It's the NLT Illustrated Study Bible. It's this one, but it was soft cover and the cover fell off. The pages are all fallen out, so I keep it in this Bible bag um, just to keep it safe. But this one was one of my favourites for many, many years. Um, as you can see, drop into pieces. And I have this NIV Bible, which I was attracted to because of the sunflowers and the fact that it is a larger print and it's this kind of mustardy yellow cover. Then I have this really beautiful goatskin leather holy Bible. It is the Cambridge Bible and it is just stunning. You've seen this one many times. It is the NLT Illustrated Study Bible. I was fortunate enough to get it in this limited edition pink card cover. And I have this beautiful Thrive Bible, which I got from one of my wonderful subscribers, Gail. By the way, I have videos on nearly all of these Bibles, reviewing them all. So if you want to see any of them in more detail, just go through my channel and you will see videos on them. Then I have this Teen Life Application Study Bible. I loved this one for many years. It is bright pink and it was really useful in my kind of late teens, early 20s. Then I have this NLT Study Bible, another bright pink girls application Bible, a youth Bible. This one I absolutely love as well. It's nice and I like to take to church and this one's in the English Standard Version. Then I have my new journal and Bible from I Am So Many Things. Love this one. I've got my King James Bible, which I use when I'm Bible studying. It's just a really affordable one off Amazon. 
And then I've got some devotionals here, which again, I've got a video on on my channel. And then my little travel Bible, which is so cute. It's just a little pink travel Bible. And this one is my husband's Bible. He also has the Illustrated Study Bible in the NLT, which is the same as this one and this one. Um, but he got the white cover. Then I have another shelf which is full of Christian books. So I have this study on 10 women of the Bible. We've been using this in my ladies study group. For some reason I have a random book about vegetables. I have this nature poem for every day of the year. It's such a beautiful book and it has such gorgeous poems in it. Then I've got New Morning Mercies by Paul David Tripp. I have this beautiful Find Rest, a women's devotion for lasting peace in a busy life. And I really like this one. It's got some really gorgeous um, pages in it. And then this is one of my most favourite Christian reads of all time. It's the Essential Toza Collection. It's got the pursuit of God, the purpose of man and the crucified life in it. And I just can't rate this enough. I love this book. I'm a big fan of Toza and his works. I think that his heart was truly after God and it really comes across in his writing. And then speaking of Toza, I have this Mornings with Toza daily devotional book, which I use very regularly. This one is another great book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I've got a review on that on my channel. Then I've got Deeper and Gentle and Lonely. These went viral, these books. Until Unity by Francis Chan. Choosing Gratitude by Nancy Lee DeMoss. Jesus Unmasked by Friel. Letters to the Church by Chan. The Daniel Prayer, really loved this one. Crazy Love by Francis Chan. Wonder Women of the Bible. This also has been really helpful in our women's study group lately. But Lies Women Believe by Nancy Del Moss. Whose Child Is This by Bill Wilson. My brother has been working with this guy, so he picked up the book for me to read, but I haven't read it yet. Um, then I've just got some little Bible study guides, so one on Proverbs, one on James, and one on Hosea. Then I've got Keep It Shut by Karen Amon, Me and My Big Mouth by Joyce Meyer. Again, another book about the mouth. Then I've got this beautiful book on Proverbs. So it's similar to this one on the Psalms, but this is just a little version on Proverbs. Ministry is, this one is really helpful if you are interested in any kind of ministry. It talks you through different ways that you can serve in the church. Then I've got The Power of a Praying Woman. Then I just have this little study guide on War Room movie because we did that as part of my church. Do something beautiful. What's your mission? This was a lady who came to our church and this is just kind of her story. So I bought her book because she was standing at the back of the church and I felt bad. <laughs> so I bought that. I haven't read it though. Um, Modern Israel, A Cloud by Day, A Fire by Night by A.W. Toza. Stop Calling Me Beautiful. This one is really useful for modern day girls. If you have a teenage daughter or one in their early 20s, I would highly recommend this book. Then I've got Left to Their Own Devices, which is a new book, but I've finished it all about modern technology and how it affects us as Christians. And then I've got Christ in the Sabbath, which talks about Christ in the Sabbath. Okay, we're on to our last shelf. I still have lots of space and I've got two more shelves here that are waiting to be filled as well. So lots of room to add to my collection still. So here I've got Delight, which is a walk through the Psalms. Love this book. It's from the Daily Grace Corps. I got it from my friend Ruthie for my birthday along with this book and another one which is up there, which I'll show you in a minute actually. Um, but yeah, very excited to use these books and to read this guy's story. This is my... This is my current TBR, which is my to be read shelf. So I'm working through this one. I'm always reading the Bible and I'm currently halfway through this one as well. Then I have God, Technology and the Christian Life. Can we just take a moment to appreciate this cover? It's so gorgeous. Then I've got the owner's manual for Christians. I heard about this on Brylin. I can't remember his name. But he's, he's a YouTuber and he said this was a great read. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. And then I've got Incomparable by Andrew Wilson. Explorations in the character of God. And then this is just my Kindle and obviously my current Bible. Okay, so these are just my most used notebooks and planners. But this is the book that I wanted to show you as well from the Daily Grace Court. Which I got from my friend Ruthie for my birthday. And it's the Colossian Study and it's called Rooted in Him, and I just can't wait to dive into that one as well. 
my thriller and romances, I call these my easy reads, so when I'm feeling like I just need a quick book that I can just pick up and quickly get through, these tend to be the type of books that I'll go for. So I've got Ruth Ware's The It Girl, really enjoyed this one. Then I've got my Taylor Jenkins Read Collection, really like her. I tried this one by Emily Henry that everyone raved about, but I just I couldn't get away with it. Controversial opinion, but didn't really like that one. Then I've got Luckiest Girl Alive, Last House on the Street, and The Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I have got Normal People by Sally Rooney and The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Then I tried out Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. Heard great things about this, but actually it was really depressing. Wouldn't recommend it. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. I did not finish. I thought it was terrible. I don't know why it's still on my bookshelf, to be honest with you. Then I've got Verity by Colleen Hoover, which I really enjoyed. It ends with Us, which I also really enjoyed. A Conflict of Interest was a really good... It's a murder mystery, and I enjoyed it. Gorky Park is a book that I've picked up about three times and started reading it and then never finished it yet, so I can't really comment on that one. Then I've got The Help, American Sniper, The Shack, Talk Bookish to Me, It Ends at Midnight, Surrounded by Idiots and Eat That Frog. And then moving down to the next shelf, my husband picked this Lake District book up last time we were there. It is just full of lots of useful information all about the Lake District. Then I've got some books that I've had for years, so I've got the Lauren Conrad celebrate book which actually I really like looking through she's got some really good advice in there for kind of hosting people and having parties and that type of thing then I've got this one by Kristen Cavallari which is called balancing in heels again has some really interesting nutritional information in there can you tell I was a fan of the hills back in the day <laughs> then I've got this one which my mum bought for me one Christmas which is called design for success then I've got Lee Evans who is a comedian I've got the life of Lee his biography. Then I've got In the Floor by Alyssa Vitti. Listen to the Diary of a CEO podcast and she was on there and I found it really interesting so I thought I'd pick up her book but actually I wouldn't really recommend the book. Then I've got Atomic Habits. I think this is a fantastic book. So many, so much good advice in this book. So yeah, I read this one over and over again. Then I've got She Means Business by Carrie Green. This is a lady who kind of started the boss babe um, phenomenon that went ongoing a while back. Um, and I really liked this book at the time. I haven't read it for years, so I couldn't really comment on it now. Then I've got this one, which my friend got me for one of my birthdays. And it's just kind of a, and it's just a girly kind of advice book covers beauty and all that type of stuff. Then I've got The Good Old, The Boy, The Fox and The Horse, which is just a beautiful read. Some gorgeous quotes in here. And then I have Inside Vogue. I used to be really interested in Vogue back in the day. And this is just kind of the story of Alexander Shulman, who is the, was the editor at the time. I don't know if she still is. Who knows? I don't follow Vogue anymore, but I used to love it. Then I've got some parenting books here. So I've got the Montessori Toddler. I don't agree with everything Montessori does, but there is a lot of aspects of their education that I loved. And um, then I've got John MacArthur's Successful Christian Parenting. Really good book, suitable for all ages. Then I've got Shepherding a Child's Heart by Ted Tripp. Really love this one as well. If you've got any more Christian book recommendations for parenting, please let me know because these are the only two that I've really stumbled upon that were highly recommended. Then I've just got A Parent's Guide to Toddler Taming. This one I got on one of my teacher training days, um, but it's how to promote children's social and emotional competence. And it is a very full on book um, all about emotional well-being, basically. And then I've just got another book on being a Montessori toddler. This one's nowhere near as good as this one. If, you, if you're interested in Montessori, I highly recommend this one by Simone Davies. And then I've got a very small classic collection, which is really sad because I did study English literature when I was at university. That's what I've got a degree in. And then for some reason, when we moved house, I decided that I didn't want books anymore. And I gave away all of my classic books which I'm so upset about I don't know why I did it we were decluttering and I think I was going through like a minimalist phase and I just got rid of them all so I'm very slowly recollecting um the classics and this is my very sorry current collection but up to now I've got Emma by Jane Austen I've got Mary Shelley's Frankenstein I thought this was a really cool cover I've got Persuasion by Jane Austen I love this edition the paper I don't know if you can, t I don't know if you can 
tell that the paper is kind of like scrapbooky and the cover is really soft and squishy. I just love this book. Then I've got Middlemarch by George Eliot, which I still haven't finished. I need to get back into reading that one. I've got Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I've got The Odyssey by Homer. And I've got Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which is probably my most favourite classic book currently. Then I have, then I picked up this, The Temple by George Herbert. It's just a very small book, but it's full of his poetry. They are religious poetry, so I really enjoy it, dipping in and out of that. Then I've got Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, and I've got The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. So that's what I've got so far. Okay, then down here is a total mishmash of books. This is just my son's Minecraft Blockopedia book. Then I've got two Makaton training manuals. I've got a big children's Bible here. I've got a children's guide to the Bible, which is full of useful information. We like dipping in and out of that one. And then I've got the Storyteller Bible, colouring books, um, a little stories to be bold, brave, and confident. 300 most frequent sight words. These are mainly for my children, a seed in need. A 52 week prayer journal for women. I've got Priscilla Shira's Armour of God study. Um, a, 52, a 52 week gratitude journal. I've got Jonathan Edwards essay on the end for which God created the world. And then I've got a few of the pens, children's devotional books here. My, this is one of my husband ones. It's a biography of Graham Seed's life, One Step Beyond. We've got Swiss Family Robinson, A Child's First Bible. And then my husband is currently doing the Lake District Peak Challenge, so he ticks off in here which of the peaks that he has climbed. And then on this side, I just have all of my recipe books. And then the last shelf is a very random collection of books. I have this Bringing Hooger into the Early Years. This is kind of my... This is kind of the book that I am working from as an early years teacher. Currently, I'm very interested in, in the Hugo way of life and making classrooms as cosy and as warm as possible. So I use that one a lot. Then I've got the Library of Shakespeare. I love this book. I got it from my dad when I was at university and it is full of all of Shakespeare's works. Next, I have this world art book and it is full of different paintings from all aspects of art history. Then I've got my Concordance of the Bible. And finally, I've got this High Scope Educating Young Children book, which is part of my education. Okay, I now need to go get a cup of tea because my voice is going from going through all of those books. But I hope you enjoyed looking through my book collection. If you've made it to this point in the video, drop a book emoji in the comments. Like I say, a lot of these books I do already have reviews on my channel. I've talked about them a lot throughout different videos. So hopefully you'll be able to find a video on ones that you are interested in. But if not, please do just comment down below and I will try my very best to help you with anything that you'd like to know. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to hit the like button so that YouTube can push my video out to more people. See you next time. Bye. Keep me